All right, this video is going to cover the basics of what it means to be charged. And when things get charged, um, there's kind of this imbalance of uh, positive and negative electricity. And if that balance gets big enough, we kind of see stuff like this. This is a discharge. This is a really big version of what happens when you get shocked after sliding down a slide or touch a doorknob, touch somebody else, it's charged, and you feel a little shock. Well, this is just a really big version of the exact same thing. I took these pictures in Mexico, and sometimes they get a little too close, and I wish I didn't have a camera in my hand. So be careful. So we're going to look at the uh, basic structure of an atom. Totally review of chem. It's even more review of uh, eighth grade science. We're going to describe the basic nature of positive and negative charges. And on your test, you'll be asked often to predict how objects will behave based on their given charges. Some vocab. We won't get all of this today. Now, the first thing we want to write down is the structure of an atom. Atoms have protons, which are positive, you'll need to know that, in the center, and mostly a neutron that goes with them. If you have two protons, you have two neutrons. And then electrons swirling around the outside. Electrons have negative charge. In general, we call these particles, we use this lowercase q to say it's a positive point charge, like a proton, or a negative point charge, like an electron. So we might say in a physics formula, the letter lowercase q for charge. So I have this little diagram drawn out. It's a, it's a good reference. It doesn't need to be too big, but I drew it big so it's easy to see everything. Most importantly, these guys are mostly equal. The number of protons in an atom equals the number of electrons. Okay, here's kind of your big note section. This is ideas on charge. First thing, every atom has a positive charge nucleus surrounded by a negative charged electron. Atoms usually have the same amount of positive and negative charged particles, so the net charge is zero. Or we say it has no charge. Objects become charged when it has an unbalance of positive or negative particles. So if it has more electrons somehow, we'll say that object is now charged. When it has an imbalance, it's more positive or more negative, that's when an object is charged. When an object is charged, you can shock each other. Uh, we'll do that a lot in class. And... Most importantly, like charges repel, opposite charges attract. So if one object has a negative charge, an imbalance of negatives, and one object has a positive charge, they will attract each other. If you put two positives near each other, they'll push each other away. Okay. Other vocabulary that we're going to use a lot. Conductors are material whose electrons are free to move around. These electrons are loose. Uh, they can transfer anything from electricity to heat because the electrons can carry along that message easily. Energy can travel easily through them in any form, whether it's thermal energy or electrical energy. These objects often lose or gain charge really well. So metal's a good conductor. Don't go golfing with metal irons in a thunderstorm because the metal can conduct electricity and attract the lightning. Insulators are materials with tightly bound electrons and don't gain charge easily. So think like rubber. Your shoes uh, help your body store charge and keep the charge from leaving your body in the ground. So rubber is a good insulator. Okay. 
Here's an example. Now we watched some videos. If you're watching this online, you need to go back to the web page. But electrons are added or taken away. This can often happen by just rubbing things together. Like the balloon on your head or the sliding of your feet across the floor. When an object is charged, say the balloon gets this positive charge from the friction of rubbing against your hair. You can oftentimes stick it to the wall and here's what's happening. The positive charged balloon pulls all the negative charged parts of this object. Probably we'll say it's like a piece of metal. I do this in class against a piece of metal. And the negative charges can actually move towards one spot because they're attracted to these positives and they'll stick together. Now the overall net charge doesn't change. However, the positives are pushed away because like charges repel and the opposites attract and we have this sticky spot right here and I stuck the balloon to a wall. We watch this in class, but if you weren't in class, this is what's happening when something is charged.